really rich. So we were really caught into the collaboration mode. We got some brainstorming done. So we have come up with some point. We couldn't converge on some of the points because we, they were really, really controversial. But let us just explain whatever we have got. Okay. So we basically started from uh, what is culture. Uh, we tried to come up to it with a definition of what a culture is. And the feedback from the team was it's a set of accepted behaviors, set of beliefs, set of folklore and stories. And one of the very interesting points that was mentioned, culture is not what happens in the meeting room. Culture is not what happens in the formal discussion. Culture is what happens in your tea time conversations, at your water cooler conversation, when you are in a cab going back home and you know the kind of conversations and the kind of behaviors you reflect upon, that is basically what constitutes the culture. Uh, it was also discussed that to have a culture, we need to build and exhibit the accepted behavior until a story of folklore uh, you know, gets established. And everyone is sharing that stories, everyone is talking about that. So that, that's how the culture spreads, that's how the culture gets established uh, you know, in, the, in the organization. Uh, then we discussed what is culture and it came out that culture is nothing but it's change of mindset. And how do we bring about a change of mindset? I think we have discussed that many times uh, during this two days uh, conference. I don't want to repeat all those things over here. But very briefly, what we discussed and what we came upon with was don't follow the rules. Always question the rules. Always ask why this rule? Why are we doing this? What's the rationale behind it? And then build your own rules break those rules and you know uh, replace them with new rules or improvise upon them another thing that uh, that will never work in an organization don't follow the rules break the rules <laughs> Let, it, which organization yeah it doesn't do literally that, right? mean you break the rules yes. what it means is it's about asking for why we are following a rule exactly. and we kind of improvise exactly so that's why I said fit, question. Fit in where you suits best. Yeah. You, you have to question, okay, why are we doing this? So you know what's the reason for it. And it don't have to be an organization wide rule. Okay, why do we have this leave policy or why do we have this HR policy? It could be the uh, policies or it could be the practices within your team that you know, why are we committing to a client for a five month release? Why can't we start with a one month release? You know, something more on those lines. Then uh, it was mentioned that culture is not something uh, you know which happens from the ground up. Culture is something which is driven from the mission. So the company goals, objectives needs to be in alignment with culture. So when we talk about mission, I don't know how many times you have uh, faced that, but uh, I have a couple of examples of my own where the mission is all rosy rosy. The mission is all, uh, you know, goody goody. You get a very goody goody, very rosy rosy feeling out of it. But when you become a part of that organization, when you, uh, you know, interact with the team, we are always trying to, uh, you know, for lack of better word, we are always trying to mislead the customer. We are not trying to be as transparent as possible. So that is basically where the gap in the culture is, where, you know, the gap between the motivation and when we say that why are my team not motivated, why are the people not motivated? A, because you're putting something else on the wall and you know behind the closed doors you're asking them to uh, do something else. So that's basically what we discussed that uh, you know culture needs to be uh, in alignment with uh, the company goals, uh, the company objectives. And uh, last but not the least, uh, it was also mentioned that structure follows culture. So you know you might want to promote a culture. Let's say you might say we want to uh, promote a flat hierarchy. We want to have a flat structure. But then if someone uh, you know, uh, approaches someone senior and that senior says, did you speak to your reporting manager first? Why are you crossing the channel? So you know, you're saying one thing, you're doing another uh, thing. So have your structure aligned with the culture. I, I know, I understand. It's easier said than done. It's very easy to preach that, but in reality, even it's difficult for me, it's difficult for everyone else. But true, that that you know, that's basically what the challenge is, and that's basically why we are here. When we discussed about innovation, you know, there was talk about how how to be innovative. And when we talk about innovation, one way or the other, the first name that comes to our mind is Apple. Right? So Apple is the most innovative company, right? What we discussed, and you know, this is a very brilliant point that came across. Many times we see innovation is a big bang idea. Okay, you have a you know great idea. What an innovative company! But we don't realize what is innovation. Innovation is nothing but it is striking of various ideas, amalgamation of different ideas, taking 20% of this idea, 50% of this idea, and you know, merging it into a another idea. And that's basically where innovation comes from. If you look about Apple today. They started with what? I mean, forget about the earlier past, but when Steve Jobs came back, they started with what? They started with iPod. When iPhone came, how many features of iPod did iPhone have? 
a lot. The music player and everything was basically nothing but all that was there in the iPod. When the iPad came, what was it? I mean, one way of uh, representing it was nothing but a bigger iPhone, where you can't make calls actually. Today, when you talk about Mac OS, many of the features which were there in the iOS, which were there in the iPhone, have now made into the Mac OS. So this was the point which was discussed, where we said that innovation is not having brand new ideas, big ticket ideas, it's basically amalgamation, transformation of you know small, small ideas here and there. The rest of the ideas, Chetaj, if you can take over. All right. Thanks, Weber. So Weber covered a lot of aspects on the culture. Let me take a step on the other two topics, which we got, innovation and motivation. Let me first talk about innovation. He has already touched upon it. So there are two key ingredients required for innovation. One is that motivation. People should really be passionate and motivated to give their best. And second is about culture of innovation. Why? Innovation can be sometimes a heroic effort, somebody really coming up with a brilliant idea. But even that brilliant idea requires brilliant execution. So it, innovation in any case has to be a team effort. So innovation requires collaboration because that means people are building on top of each other's idea. Somebody is coming up with an idea, other person are building on top of that idea. Hey, can we do that as well? Or there's a problem with that idea, what about that? They might question, they might challenge, they might build on top of that, and that is how innovation comes. So culture of collaboration and motivation. Now let me talk about motivation. So motivation, first of all, a lot of people talk about in terms of compensation and this and that, but these are all nothing but hygiene factors. Fair compensation, job security, these hygiene factors should definitely be there, there's no doubt about it. But ultimately it's about, beyond that, it's about intrinsic collaboration. Now intrinsic collaboration will come, I mean different people will have different factors, but broadly we are all knowledge workers. If we see that we are able to put our best and we are being appreciated for that, and there's a kind of a community, we are kind of, uh, we are really passionate, there are people who, who, whom you, we can look up to, naturally drive us to put our best, to master the craft. Once we are able to master the craft, naturally the innovation will come after that. So these were the points, let me just see if the, so there were other points like learning opportunity generally drives people, flexibility, people can change roles, Sometimes organizations are hierarchical, so people see the growth in terms of moving up the line, but sometimes that makes the organization top heavy, so it may not be always practical. So even hierarchical or non-hierarchical, sometimes it's about growth, maybe still in terms of the role. People are doing this, they may get bored doing this. Is the company, is there an empowerment and flexibility for people to really switch to something else, so that they can really charge their batteries? Any other thoughts, team? What do From I a team, any, any I mean, let, add let's, what, let's first let's get the to team the team itself. Question. Yeah. In, in the team, no, I think, uh, any, any point? <laughs> you did a very good collaboration now. <laughs> any point to add? Yeah. Uh, in anyway. fact, my question got answered how they explained. <laughs> just, Thank you. One so, example uh, is coming yeah. around that motivation. That's fine. It's, it's like how many people play, uh, it's, it's kind of, you worded it very well that when you actually start feeling motivated, so it's probably a feedback is also coming and you're enjoying it. So a very good example that I see is, uh, are there people who play musical instruments here? Guitar, keyboard, how many are those? More. Anyone who plays any? So when you start in the journey of learning a musical instrument, the initial phase is the toughest phase because you have to sit maybe in a guitar or in a professional or tabla. It takes really initial three, four, five months with a, somebody had a stick in a hand to ensure that you're practicing. But once you are started taking on one song or one chord, then when you start realizing the fruits of that, then you start, you know, feeling more motivated to actually do that. And that's very well true with the work that you do. So if you start getting a, you know, good feedback of the work that you do, so that's why I was saying at that point in time, the that's feedback true. is coming from that point. So if you start telling the people the good work that they have done, so they will feel automatically the, the, the culture would start building again. I would also yeah, like to add with the game which we played much which Madhur organized, it's not always about competition. Uh -huh. It's about even if somebody has got a brilliant idea, how other people can kind of add and join the forces. Great. great. Appreciate that. Yeah, great. Now questions? Do we have a questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, I've got some. Okay. Something to share? Yeah. I just uh, want to share some uh, ideas on the innovation actually. I think uh, Apple is being talked about so often actually. Uh, yeah, probably uh, on the uh, iWatch story, it's available. Uh, I had read one story on 
the IWAS part of the innovation basically. Uh, we, we give examples on that, but uh, the story goes like, the, like, like, like this, that uh, it, uh, a guy from uh, Adobe, he took over the development of uh, IWAS. And by the time when he, uh, he, he joined, a lot of work was done and almost it was going to get completed. But still, it took quite a large number of iterations and it took about one year for the product to come out actually. So uh, the way uh, iPhone works or the Apple works actually, or the Apple works is that they have a lot of iterations for innovations. So probably we are like, like the, in the services time bound to such an extent that uh, for the innovation enough time is not given. I think that's one point to be noted that we give examples but we must give time. Okay. The second thing is, yeah. there is one more point actually. Yeah. Seven, seven thinking hats, if you read that actually, de bonus. Yeah. So for a product, yeah. you try to have white cap, then you tell about what are the good qualities of this black cap, tell about the, uh, what, what are the bad qualities about that. Similarly, you can have brainstorming meetings only dedicated for innovation or new ideas basically. Then only you will be able to do that. Great to invest time actually on that. Thank you. Great. Any other questions? Any other questions? Good.